What is up everyone and welcome to another Bitcoin market update. In these videos you will learn how to use technical analysis to forecast price movements in your favorite cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and others. All right, so let's dive into it here with Bitcoin on the weekly time frame. In today's video, we're going to be going through the weekly time frame all the way down to the 12 hour time frame and then also probably the six hour as well. Uh, just to look at a couple support and resistance levels and then we'll cover also <coughs> the edge to edge trade that is playing out on the Ichimoku cloud, the target for that, and then also my thoughts on Bitcoin as a whole. So starting off with Bitcoin in the weekly time frame, you can see that um, this is something I've been talking about on this channel for the past couple weeks. Uh, after we got this candle close, I said it's been likely that we'll go above that weekly high on the subsequent next week and see where that candle closes. And then I said uh, on yesterday's video, if we end up getting a candle close with a short upper wick with increasing bull volume, um, we did not get the increasing bull volume on this exchange at least, um, but we did get that candlestick with a good close with a short upper wick. Um, I said it's probably likely that we'll see continuation into next week. And now what I'm looking for is a potential weekly candlestick that looks bearish um, to signify that our high has been set on this run up in price and then we'll look to come down and form a higher low somewhere above the previous low from 29,254. And the reason for that is because the magnitude of the move. So we've had a pretty significant move up of about 60%. So it's very likely that our uh, high will be set very soon. And then we'll look for a uh, higher low to be set somewhere below um, where we are now on this weekly candle, which is at about 42,648. So um, if we look at this from a pivots perspective, you can see that we're running into the pivot level that I've been talking about for quite some time now, which is this R2 pivot right here. So if we zoom in a little bit, you can see uh, we've ran into this zone and now we're rejecting off of this. You can see price has already uh, drew down a decent amount from this R2 level. So if we look at this and we pull this down to where we are now, it's decreased about 1.26% uh, basically from where the candle open was. Um, you can tell that by the 1.22% over here on this side. So people are pricing in the fact that this uh, could very, very easily be the high uh, getting set right now. And the reason for that is because of the magnitude of this move already. Because we've already risen 60%, uh, it's very likely that we will set our high, you know, somewhere in this R2 zone. At least that's my personal opinion. So let's go down to the three-day time frame and look at what we're dealing with there. So uh, if we do end up going up a bit higher, we're going to run into this three-day resistance level up at about 47K, which is what I've been talking about in the past several videos as well. Um, this zone is from our bullish trend right here. So when we come back into this zone, you can see it acts as support right here. We bounce, we come back into it again, we bounce, and then we reject through it and we close below it. Now, once we come back into this zone, this will be a support resistance flip zone that is now flipped to be resistance when it used to be support right here and right here. So now what we're looking for is where are we going to um, potentially uh, set that high? So because this zone is so large, this three-day zone goes all the way from 47K up to about um, 52,700, uh, it's very likely that this zone is, you're going to have a rejection off of this zone. It's just a matter of how big that rejection is going to be uh, if we do end up coming into it in this, uh, in this weekly candle. Right now, you can already see that we're getting that kind of rejection uh, from that uh, weekly pivot zone that we talked about. So you can see um, already we've went um, down a bit more from where we initially were, which is at 1.22% down for the day. So that zone is holding up as I expected it to, which is nice. Uh, if we go down to the lower time frame, like the daily, we can see that this level also lines up very well with the R1 daily pivot, which is up at about $46,250. Um, so right now you can see that we did con we we started to look like we're going to confirm the trend here with a uh, low high higher low and then higher high here 
with this candle close above the key high. Now it's a matter of if this daily candle close is going to be above this high or below it. So that's what I'll be watching um, in the next daily close in 20 hours. So this daily candle looks very bullish obviously, but it's important to recognize the bearish divergence that exists here between these two highs. You can see that this one is much lower than this one here, meaning that this rise in price is much weaker than this rise in price that we had here. So that means we're running out of bullish momentum uh, in the short term. So what I would what I would uh, what I would expect to kind of happen here is is one of two scenarios. Um, the first scenario is you know this candle uh, ends up just closing below this this key high here from uh, August eighth to uh, in today's daily candle, and then we see a drawdown thereafter, or we close above this daily candle here. And then we go below that candle in the next subsequent days, turning this into a resistance zone for price if we get a couple candle closes below that zone. And then we'll see a rejection potentially off of that zone thereafter. But right now it's looking that we're like we're getting a pretty uh, quick rejection off of this R1 pivot here and that weekly R2, which we've been talking about for probably over a month now. Um, so that's the daily time frame. So let's go down. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I just wanted to say one last thing. So this is basically the target getting hit here for this Ichimoku cloud trade that I started talking about back here in, I think, end of July. So this trade is something I've been talking about. And just to briefly overview this for those of you that did not see the past few videos where I've talked about it, this uh, indicator is called the Ichimoku cloud. And it so it has uh, three different elements to it. It has the cloud. Um, it also actually has four different elements to it, but I don't pay attention to one of them. Um, which is this green line right here called the lagging span. Um, so I just pay attention to the blue line, which is the Tenkin, the Kijun, which is the red line, and then the cloud itself, which is this, in, at the current moment, red uh, area here. So when you get candle close inside of the cloud, and the cloud is very large, uh, here's an example of an edge-to-edge -edge trade as well. So the candle closes inside of the cloud right here. The cloud's very large and people take a short down to the other edge of the cloud, which is down here. So that's what we see. We got that move pretty quickly after that in a few days. Now we're seeing another edge to edge move here. So we get the candle close back inside here. So initially we got faked out. So if we look right here, we got a candle close back here on July 28th, but then we started to rise. And then after that happened, we came down and closed back outside of it, which would have stopped you out of the trade. Uh, and then we went um, back up here and we closed back inside of it here on August 4th. And now we've been running up ever since. So the target is always the other edge of the cloud. And in this case, the other edge of the cloud is at uh, 46,980. And so we, we, we got pretty much up to that beside, you know, missed it by like 100 points. Um, so that zone is right in line with this gray resistance zone as well. So we'll see if we end up getting that uh, final move up into that point. But if we do, that 47K level is going to be pretty strong resistance because of the confluence of those two factors there. Um, all right, let's go down to the 12 hour. So if we look at this from a 12 hour perspective, um, something I want to point out here is this gray zone. So this gray zone is a support level, actually that now it is at least because we got two candle closes above it. So if we look here, it was resistance here. So resistance came into it again, resistance a second time, and then we finally closed above it here with two candle closes above. And now we're coming back into it here. So if we come back down into this level and test it, uh, it, it uh, could very easily turn into support um, and push price into that uh, gray three day zone that we were talking about there. Uh, if we go down to the six hour time frame, we can see our main um, uh, support level that we were talking about yesterday that supported price um, perfectly here. So yesterday we even took the wicks off of it and we said, all right, we're just gonna go right here. You can see that um, the price bounces off of this level and it has a nice rise up to roughly 47K. And this level was from our bull trend right here. So if we look at this, um, it's very simple to see. We have a low here, we have a high, we'll pull this over, 
we have a high here. I'm sorry, this candle. So we come up, we form a high. We come down right here, we form a low and break to a new higher high in the same candle. We come up, we get some candle closes above the key high from right here on August 7th. And then once that happens, once we get two candle closes above that key high, that is where this turns into support and we come back into it, we test the support here and then boom, we get this very nice long bodied uh, white candle here that pushes us up above that gray zone. So if we look at this from Ichimoku Cloud perspective, we can see that uh, these lines are starting to converge, um, which is not necessarily a bad thing, um, but it is something that uh, is, in, this is what happens when the trend starts to potentially come to an end. Uh, these things cross and you see the red line cross above the blue line here. So we'll see if that ends up happening in the coming days. That's something I'm gonna be watching for myself. And if we look at this from an RSI perspective, uh, we can see that we did dip into the overbought territory here um, in the last uh, candle. And we're seeing a sell-off thereafter of people pricing in the fact that we were overbought on the six hour time frame. Typically, if you get into the overbought territory, after a pretty long run up, uh, you see some sort of a sell-off shortly thereafter. You can see that we got that here. Um, but sometimes, as you can see right here, we dipped into it here at 70.79. But you can see where that was in price. We were right around here. And then we still got a pretty significant rise thereafter. So this indicator, you know, when, you, when it's saying it's overbought or oversold, is just one f uh, factor to look at. So it's just telling you um, there's a lot of people buying right now based on this time frame, um, And so what that you can use that and say, okay, there's a lot of people buying. So maybe the price may move down next because the buyers are getting exhausted, right? The price is getting overbought, meaning it's, it's kind of blown out of proportion in that sense. So that is all I got for this one, guys. If you like this video, give it a like down below and subscribe for future educational content around cryptocurrency and blockchain technology and comment anything that you would like to see in future video tutorials. We'll be doing some of those uh, hopefully this week. We'll maybe do at least one of them uh, where we cover a topic outside of these uh, analysis videos, which I hope are helpful for you as well in learning the skill sets that you need to trade these crypto assets the way that you would like to trade them. Um, also check out our Global Lutheria Telegram channel. This is where you can connect with members from around the world in over 14 different countries who are really interested in cryptocurrency as well. So check that out, it is free to join. And until tomorrow, onward and upward.